Hello, Brian Hogg here, and I want to make this quick video to show you how you can use MailChimp lists and import contacts that you might have. Maybe you're moving from Constant Contact or Aweber or some other email platform, and you want to import them into a list. And you can actually separate them into groups or interests. So for example, maybe I've got a list of people who are interested in parenting, like maybe it's a church or something, and maybe I've got a list of volunteers, so people who have expressed interest in volunteers, and maybe I've got another list of people who are just interested in getting the newsletter. So it's not a specific interest, they're just interested in getting the general everyone gets a newsletter. So there's a way that we can do that. So if we, so in MailChimp you can have more than one list, and you could, you know, we could import, say, have a parenting list and a volunteers list and a newsletter list. But if you may notice, I'm in each of them because why not? I'm everywhere. <laughs> so I've got the newsletter one here, volunteers parenting. So if I do that, then Mailchimp will count it. Well, a couple things. Mailchimp will count it as three people because uh, if they're separated into lists, then the three different people. And also they're, you know, these are people that they're all related. They're all people I want to contact about the same organization, but they just have different interests, right? So what I can do is instead of creating multiple lists for each one, what I can do is create one list, which will just be, you know, say my organization from name. This could be your organization name. Hit save. Oh, I need to write a short reminder. So maybe uh, you signed up in person or maybe via the website if I allowed them to do that. So if I just hit save, here we go, we've got a list and we don't have anyone on it yet. And what we can then do is go into manage contacts and then into groups. So this allows us to specify groups of people and we could either have it as they can have more than one. So for in my example, I have I could be interested in parenting, I could be interested in volunteering, and then a general newsletter is not a specific interest maybe, it's just I'm on the list. So I might have more than one. So I can just say, okay, interests maybe, and I can then put parenting, volunteering, and I'll just save that for now, but I can add up to 64, I think is the limit for MailChimp for any uh, one group or number of kind of ca groups that you can have on a list. So I'll hit save. And now it'll give me the option to import into that group, but I can actually do that here as well. Say I'm on just the main list page. I can go to import contacts. So it gives me the option. Do I want to paste it? Do I want to do CSV? So I can export this as a CSV. Go back to my import, I'll say next. Now I'll browse for that file, or you can just highlight it and put it up here. Hit next. And now it should, it's normally smart about which field it picks, but uh, I can do first name, last name, so I don't have a full name field, that's fine. Uh, or I can skip that column entirely and just not have that right there. All I'm really interested in is the email address. So I'll hit save there. Hit next. And now here's where you want to make sure you set the right settings. So I can just import them and they'll be imported as subscribed members to my list. But I also want to import them into the parenting group. So because I don't have anyone on the list yet, it's not giving me this other option to update their information if they're already on the list. But we should see that in the next group. So I'll hit import, and there we go. So you can see they're listed as parenting interest, and they're subscribed. So now I can repeat this process and go to import contacts. Now I'll go to my volunteers list. I'll download this as a CSV. Go over to my import. I'll just pick uh, CSV again. Drag up my volunteers list, or you could browse and find it on your computer. Again, I'll just skip the name. If I had it separated into first name, last name, maybe I'd pick that in the columns. I'll hit email and hit next. And now again, I can 
add them to specific interests. So in this case, it's volunteering. And now I want to make sure that I check this auto update my existing list. So this is going to see if they're already on the list and then update their interests and update their information if they are. If I don't check this, it might remove the parenting interests from say myself, because I'm on each one of these lists. So if I hit import, there we go. So now you can see that, you know, Joe and myself, Brian, are interested in both parenting and volunteering, whereas these other contacts only have one interest each. So now I could have, uh, I could do one more import, and I can just do this, hit next. Same thing, I'm just gonna grab, so these are just people who I've got their contact information, I don't really know their interests yet, so I'm just gonna put them into the list without any interest yet. So I'll hit next. Again, I'll skip this column, save this one, hit next. Now same thing, so I'm not gonna import them into an existing group, but I will auto update just in case, for example, myself is already on the list with some other data. So I'll hit import. And here we are. So again, I've got myself, nothing's changed, still the same two interests, and I've got two other people who have no interests indicated yet. So now the power of this is that not only when you send someone an email, say by creating a new campaign, you can now specify who you want to send them to. So you can say create an email, I'll call this, uh, you know, upcoming events this weekend, or maybe it's for a specific event or specific thing you want to tell certain people. And now I can pick my list, but now instead of saying the entire list, I can say, I only want to send to people who have an interest of maybe one of, or all of, or none of, one of these interests. So I could say all of, oh, I want to send it to people who have interest in parenting and volunteering. And you could do that by either holding control or shift or something on the keyboard to be able to pick more than one. Or I can just say, no, I just wanna, this is just applicable to parents and people who are interested in parenting, so I will pick that list. And then when I hit next, I can pick all the things you'd normally do, the email subject, preview text, all that good stuff. You know, enter a bit of preview text. Maybe just pick a simple text campaign. And here I can now start to enter some content and create a newsletter that's specific to those who are interested in parenting. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail, but so here I can you know delete this, add a new content block, do whatever I need to do. But one really powerful thing you can do with interest is you can actually send one campaign to everybody, but then only show some stuff to people who have expressed interest in a certain uh, group, you know, who are in a certain group. And this is by using these conditional merge tag blocks, which sounds confusing, but essentially you can do groups. And so in your content, right, of your email, you could have like, um, you know, upcoming, say, maybe events for parents. And, you know, you could list that, say, I don't know, on October 5th uh, at uh, 12 p.m. at, you know, uh, main lobby or something. There's an event that's happening at your organization at a certain location. But this is only, you only want to show this to people who are interested in parenting events. So if I'm typing that in, you can literally put something like interested in group title, group name. And you don't, you don't have to memorize this. You can just Google, you know, merge tag groups block. You'll probably memorize it after a few times. And you want to make sure that you paste uh, and match style. So you can right click, paste and match style just so it doesn't look weird or add any formatting to your, uh, to your actual thing. And then we would change this group title part to interests because that's the kind of group name that we gave it. And then in this case, we do parenting. And then at the end, we would get rid of or stop or end this block and show the rest of everyone else by then pasting this end interested part. So now everyone else might see this here and maybe a bit of intro tasks. 
right, at the beginning and end, and some general information. But now only people who are interested in parenting will see this. And you can repeat this process for, say, the volunteers group, right? So just change this to volunteering. And away you go. And you want to, you know, do a test campaign to, say, a test list, maybe, uh, you know, create a new list or, or, or add some contacts to it before you start importing your contacts, just to make sure you've got your campaign set correctly. But essentially, this will uh, do what it needs. And there's some more advanced options you can look at to here. You can specify more than one group for a section, stuff like that. This could be made even more powerful for stuff like events. If you happen to be using WordPress, you can use this event calendar newsletter plugin to then send the details of upcoming events from your calendar, for example, parenting or something else, put those in one of the conditional merge blocks like we saw here, and then only those people will see those events and you don't have to type it out manually anymore. So that's an intro on how you can use the powerful MailChimp merge tag features and add them into groups so you can organize your communication in a nice, organized, effective way.